Welcome to another episode of Rehab Now with consultant physiatrist Dr. Paula Dawson, our rehabilitation medical doctor. I'm your host, Alicia Taylor. Hello, Dr. Dawson. Hello, Alicia Taylor. Hello, listeners. You? I'm great. So are you? Well, thank you. Well, thank awesome you. stuff. Today we're talking about one of my favorite things in life. <laughs> Yeah, Singing. man, arthritis. Oh, we know boy. how chirpy I sound today. <laughs> Remember oh, to check out our goodness. social media pages on Instagram. is Rehab Institute Caribbean and, or Dr. Paula Dawson or Alicia Taylor Music. And on Facebook is Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean. And our website is RehabCaribbean.com. Yes, ma'am. So this week we're talking about hip That's right. arthritis. Let me just... <laughs> yeah, we can't you know, I can't I'm I'm fed up. I'm fed up. You know? People you can't get arthritis up. in your ears. <laughs> you know, I mean, just everywhere. It's crazy. But tell us a, a little bit about the, you know, the hip arthritis. You know, I, I'm going to try to make you feel a little bit better about arthritis. There's no one, way. No, no. It can be prevented and it can be treated. Mm-hmm. Let's hear it. All right. <laughs> so the hip joint. Where is the hip joint? Right on your hip. <laughs> you know what? I always like to ask patients, where is the hip? Because sometimes patients would say, my hip hurted me, but mm-hmm. they're referring to the groin oh. or they're referring to the, the what we call the the hip bone, which is what the trochanteric bursa. The, the trochanter. <laughs> the greater trochanter is kind of where the hip bone kind of sticks out. The trochanter. And then it might be their buttocks. So you have to really say, where is your hip? All right, then I don't know where my hip is. There. Right. So, mm-hmm. And that's a good thing because, not a good thing that you don't know, <laughs> but because hip pain can be referred to many places. Mm-hmm, but first of all, mm-hmm. where is the hip? The, or what is the hip? The hip is one of the largest joints in the body. Mm-mm. It's a ball and socket joint. I know that much. Yay! So the socket is what we call the acetabulum, which is a part of the... Say, acetabulum. Acetabulum. There you go. And it's it. a part of the pelvis. Where I say I have two acetabulum them. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Good two, job. Two, the two as, the, let's do the left and the right acetabulum. Keep them singular. Uh, and you have the... Femur, the femoral head, which is the thigh bone, it goes up and it forms a nice little ball and it fits yeah, into man. the acetabulum. So it's a ball and socket joint. Now, as you know, the reason we get arthritis is because the joint has cartilage, which is the cushioning aspect of it. And that cartilage is covered by synovium, and which is kind of like a thin membrane. And the synovium has sino, sino, sinocytes, which are synoviocytes, sorry, which are the cells which produce the fluid. So you need the fluid to keep the joint nice and lubricated. Mm-hmm. So when they sign out, then you basically. <laughs> That's a good one. When the synoviocytes sign out, <laughs> <laughs> you no longer have. And in fact, we're going to talk about a, a type of treatment, which is hyaluronic acid, which helps to kind of add that lubrication and kind of stimulate those cells. Okay. And so once the cartilage is worn down, remember arthritis? What happens when you get arthritis? One, decreased joint space. Uh So one bone is closer to the other bone. And so once the cartilage is worn down, because the cartilage is a buffer between the two, you can get grinding. Yeah. Bone on bone. That's one thing. I know, right? It's painful. So you have decreased joint space. Then what will happen after that? You will have thickening of the bone at the joint interface. What do I mean by that? So the acetabulum, which is the socket, the bone that lines the acetabulum gets thick. We call it sclerosis. Mm-hmm. And it may even get some little bit of out pocketing. We call cysts, right? And, and what happens, the body now tries to thicken the bone and it starts growing sideways and you get bone spurs. Right? So it damages the bone. So the thing, the cardinal signs of arthritis, any joint, one, decreased joint space, mm-hmm. decreased cartilage, cartilage worn down. Then you get the um, periarticular sclerosis. Inside, on the inside, that's grown on the inside. Yes, oh, okay. yes. You can get bone spurs on the inside, but it's usually okay. at the outer aspect of okay. the joint. So you get bone spurs, or we call those osteophytes, right? <sighs> and and you get, so what is, you know, that is basically what happens to the bone. The bone gets 
damaged. Mm. Right? And what were the patient complaints of? Yeah, because that's what I was going to ask. You know, what are, <laughs> what are the signs and the, and the symptoms besides pain? Do you know what's the difference between a sign and a symptom? No, tell me. That's a good question. When I went to medical school, that's how I found out. A right, symptom, so, take a guess. Okay. So the sign mm-hmm. is probably just like one thing that you see. Oh, no, no. And then yes. symptoms is like a series. Of not no? bad, but okay. symptoms is what the patients tell you they feel. Oh. And sign is what you can either see or examine. All right. So you can't see pain, so a symptom is pain. Okay. But you can see swelling, so a swelling is a, a sign. sign. No. So a symptom, the patient will complain of increasing pain, decreased mobility. You know, you have decreased range of motion. That's a sign, but patients will first tell you about that because tell you what you feel. They have decreased range of motion. They can feel swelling. But so you will examine and find a sign that you will find is one, decreased, re- decreased range of motion of the hip. Mm-hmm. So the patients will tell you, I have pain when I walk. I have pain when I get out of bed. Mm-hmm. I have pain when I try to cross my leg. Mm. You know, sometimes you sit down and you try to cross your legs, they get pain. Mm-hmm. I have pain when I am, I am, you know, going from a sitting to a standing position, transitional movement. So that those are the, <laughs> yeah, transitional and here's one thing they complain about. Pain when rain is about to fall. Yeah. My grandmother used to complain about that all the time. Do you know why? You did tell me that, but your arthritis may just forget. <laughs> well, so why is, why, do, why is it that people with arthritis or joint problem, why is it that the joints hurt more when it rains? Mm-hmm. Well, when it rains, you get a drop in the pressure, barometric pressure. Oh. So when you have a drop in the barometric pressure, there's less pressure on your body. It's like, you know, like when you're going diving and mm-hmm. the further deeper you go with diving, there's more pressure on your body. Yeah. You know about that, yeah. right? Yep. You have um, ground level pressure. So when it's about to rain, there's a drop in the barometric pressure. Oh. When that happens, you don't so have as much pressure on the body. So the body kind of relaxes and the muscle, in a sense, they kind of expand. In the body kind of expands. And when that happens, it, what will happen, you may kind of compress the joints more so it's a it's a it's, it's a it's a expansion because of barometric pressure that, that does that happen when the time gets cold or no well when the time gets cold with, with time getting cold remember when the tissue is more relaxed mm. and so things get stiffer so you know like if you have a knee pain and they say you can put some hot water or, in yeah. or a, mm. a hot bag or something like that mm-hmm. so it's interesting you say that because what do you treat how do you treat when the rain is coming mm-hmm. one you try to keep warm. Okay. Right? So you can Makes take sense. warm baths, baths so you can put warm packs on the thing. Or you try mm-hmm. to keep active. Mm-hmm. So the activity will kind of decrease the kind of compression on your hip. Mm-hmm. You understand? <laughs> so, so with patients with hip pathology, they tend to have a, a particular walk that we call Trendelenburg. <laughs> it's always the words. So... You ever see some people walking and every time they walk, they tilt one side, like tilt like that. So there are several causes of Trendelenburg and hip, a problem in the hip is one cause. Mm. And why do they do that? Glad you asked. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, So if somebody has a hip joint pathology, every time you weight bear, the muscles around the hip tightens. And once the muscles around the hip tightens, it squeezes the hip mm. hip together Jeez. and it causes more pain. Oh. So when you wait there, so what they'll do is when they rock away, mm-hmm. it kind of eases the pressure. Mm. Yeah. So the patients complain of decreased range of motion, <sighs> only for pain, and guess where the pain is? In them hip. True. I like that. But you can have loin to groin and you can even have knee pain. Oh, so so that's, is that deferred pain? Referred pain. Sorry, Absolutely. referred. <laughs> referred pain. Refer- <laughs> Same thing. You get the word. So, referred pain. So, I mean. hip pathology can give you pain in your buttocks, around the back. It makes sense. It can give you loin to groin, down into the groin, mm-hmm. and it can even go down your anterior thigh and even in the knee. Mm-hmm. In the knee, especially with internal rotation. So, when you turn your hips in, you can get more pain. So, so can the referred pain or can the pain, the so, yeah, so let's say you're having hip arthritis Mm -hmm. and it refers the pain to your knee Mm -hmm. can that pain be so persistent Mm -hmm. or be so constant that you develop 
an issue in that area? In the knee itself? Yeah, in the knee. Usually mm-hmm. not. Okay. Usually not, because it's referred pain. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. kind of a very interesting thing that you say, you know, <clears throat> because wherever there's referred pain, you can get muscle tightening. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. that's another thing mm-hmm. with myofascial. Mm-hmm. So the body is such an amazing thing. So you have if. inflammation in the, the hip joint, and because you have pain down the front of the leg, the front of the leg now gets tender, you, yes. start, you tend to stop using it you don't use it as much because anytime you put weight on it Too you're much. now having mm-hmm. a limp that's another thing another sign you see a limp and those muscles might get weaker so you get atrophy of the muscles uh-huh. patients mm. may even hear grinding or popping crepitation so you may hear like every time you walk you're oh. like a cocoon <laughs> yeah. in, okay. in the muscles so in the joint so these are some of the things that can you, these are these are the symptoms now the question is who gets it? <laughs> you remember ask a question. Now. Sorry, ask a question. So the question <laughs> is, who gets it? <laughs> oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the people who get it, obesity. I was people who are you know, overweight, they I was tend gonna to ask you. Yeah, man, because you're always putting weight Pressure. on the mm-hmm. air. So mm. of course, when you're growing older. Usually people over 50. You know anybody over 50? Yeah, man. A few. Like me. Do that too. I'm 50. I keep forgetting that you're 50. 50. I know. 25 backwards. Yeah. All right. That's that not bad. That's not bad. 20, you know, 25. I know. <laughs> so um, it can run in the family, right? It can be. Oh. Yeah. It can run in the family. <sighs> Sorry. Go you, ahead. You continue. know anybody with him? Yeah, yeah, let me tell you. Oh, wait, the hip arthritis. Yes, hip arthritis. Oh, Not the no, knee. No, 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 I'm good. You're yeah. good. <laughs> You're good. So it can be a previous injury that you've had, like a motor yeah, vehicle man. accident, and like it kind of changed. Mm-hmm. Right. It can be your biomechanics when one leg is shorter than the other. Limb length discrepancy or limb length difference. Because of the difference in limb length, you tend to load one limb more than the other. So that hip kind of weight bears a little bit more than the mm. other. Or you may have abnormal hip anatomy on birth, something called hip dysplasia. Right? So now there, there's something called femoral acetabular impingement, FAI, which is kind <laughs> of a <laughs> where you have different shape of the femoral head. One is called pistol whip, pistol um, handle, and one is cam. Those are some acronyms. So a nice ball and socket is where the ball fits nice in the socket. But sometimes the ball, the sock, the ball, sorry, is a little bit malaligned, mm. and that can predispose you to more impingement, more rubbing down, more abrasion, more um, the wearing down of the cartilage. More pain. More pain. In other words. In other words, yeah, more man. pain. Yeah, so we, we, we're going to have to take a break. But when we get back, I want to ask you a few... Um, I want to ask you a few more things. Doc, <laughs> please stay with us. We're on hip arthritis. Yes, we are. Welcome back to Rehab Now. If you're just joining us, we're talking about hip arthritis. Mm -hmm. If you know us, you know how much I hate arthritis. But Doc is trying to um, convince me that there is some good that can come out of this bad situation. Absolutely. She was telling us about the persons who are predisposed Mm -hmm. to arthritis, to hip arthritis. I wanted to ask, is there like a particular ethnicity that, you know is a little bit more predisposed to it or not? Mm-hmm. You know, I think historically in the books they say um, African. Of course. <laughs> <sighs> and you know, I'm wondering, this is my opinion, not necessarily textbook opinion. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering it's because, you know, um, Africa, I will say African-American, but African descent, we tend not to, historically we do a lot of walking. Mm, we walk to yeah. the field, we do a lot of manual walking work as opposed to sedentary city yeah. mm-hmm. and so you know a lot more if you look in any country first world country the the you know black people will walk more <laughs> this is my opinion okay. you understand and the, the other nationality but yes okay. uh, and any population that is predisposed to having more obese people you know obesity as you know is mm. one of the predisposing factors mm. so you know and I like the fact that you asked that question because you know we always talk about risk factors and on the risk factors, you have modifiable and non-modifiable. Mm-hmm. You can't change your age. 
That's true. You can do Botox, though, to try change how you look. You can't change your age and you can't change your family history. But one of the things with family history that sometimes we have to look into, is it diet-related? Oh. Is it the practices that we do? Oh, that makes sense. Mm. Is that it the fact sense. that everybody in the family don't exercise? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So it yeah. might be, right. you know, so it might run in the family, yeah. but it might be other factors mm, okay. that, you know, is the cause. Well, we have that little attitude. We just like to um, certain <laughs> things. Cool, got it. Makes sense. Right, right. And so, you know, modifiable things, you can definitely modify your level of activity. Mm. And so exercise will always help to stabilize joints so today we're talking about joint the hip joint not necessarily the bone so even mm-hmm. after even after being diagnosed mm-hmm. with hip arthritis or any arthritis for that matter mm-hmm. you still mm-hmm. need to do the exercise Absolutely. you still need for exercise even mm-hmm. with all that pain i like i like that question so first of guess what we're going to talk about now algorithm touch me my girl we're gonna talk about the algorithm because before we can get you exercising we have to get the pain under control and the inflammation Mm -hmm. under control Mm -hmm. you know so hip arthritis and we're talking about osteoarthritis i should have probably made that clear before because you have rheumatoid arthritis which is inflammatory you have some people that might have psoriasis Mm -hmm. which is a skin condition you may have psoriasis type arthritis you may have some other um, autoimmune type inflammatory arthritis so you know while osteoarthritis is usually from wear and tear and overuse and misuse mm-hmm. so for example I find that a lot of people who play um, high impact sports I remember I was watching something and Hulk, Hulk Hogan and some of you don't even probably know who that is just be a wrestler he did a hip replacement oh. right exactly and it's known in Jamaica that one of our King of Dancehall had a hip replacement from a motor vehicle accident he had some time ago. Mm, Do you remember that? Okay, no, no. All right. So who's the King of Dancehall? Oh so no, no, no. I remember. A, sorry, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so we'll talk so there was a there was a motor vehicle accident, and I suppose there was a hip injury. I don't know. I didn't treat the patient, but this is an example of you know where trauma can lead to changes in the hip pathology and hip alignment and then you get wearing down so I, I so that might not be that hip arthritis developed but clearly the moiety you remember that word mm-hmm. the moiety of the hip was so much so that it had to be replaced she's um right right and and uh, with the algorithm as you so rightly said earlier you <sighs> have to start with first thing uh, rehab. I was just gonna say that. Right, rehab. But this time we kind of jump ship with the re- with the algorithm because you can't do exercise or therapy if you're in pain. Mm, that's true. So we have to give you some medication. So you start with simple things first: acetaminophen, mm-hmm. which is like over the mm-hmm. counter, like Panadol mm-hmm. or Tylenol or Cetamol mm-hmm. or any one of those ulls. But of course, you can't take this without you speak to your doctor because yeah. it can be something else that's causing yeah. the hip pain, but we're speaking specifically for osteoarthritis. And so, but, you know, some people say, but Panadol can't help me on Cetamol or any of those anti, um, acetaminophen can't help. That is usually true because you need an anti-inflammatory, usually NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like diclodenc, you know, diclofenac, you know, those ibuprofen, naproxen, these are the ones that will help your inflammation and mm-hmm. it also helps the pain. A lot of times, sometimes you may have muscle tightening around the hip and you may need muscle relaxant. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so we start with the meds and once we get the pain under control, then we can start with the rehab. But of course, two aspects of the rehab can be lifestyle. So under rehab, we have physiotherapy. So now you may not be able to do ambulatory or weight bearing exercise, but you can still do some isometric. Isometric is where you can tighten Without moving, right? right? So it's when you do range of motion or weight bear that tends to hurt the hip. So you can do strengthening of the muscles around the hip to take the pressure off the hip to help with the first thing you want to do is try and get back some range of motion because you get stiffness, you know. As, as you know, one of the, the doctors will tell you that during inflammation, you get decreased range of motion, you get tightening, and when you get that, it kind of limits your ability to move and you get pain. So we do 
range of motion. And there are so many things we can do in physical therapy. You know, there's so many modalities that we use, at the therapist at Rehab Institute of the Caribbean. But at Rehab Institute of the Caribbean, we have, we have shockwave, we have shortwave, diathermy, we have cold laser. Yeah, man. We have, cold laser. Yeah, man, we have ultrasound, we have interferential, we have a lot of stuff. But the most important person in your rehab is your therapist. Why? Very important because they will determine what's best for you. So not everything will work for everybody and not mm. every exercise will work for everyone. Excellent. So the physical therapist is very important in your treatment. Excellent. Yes. And then the lifestyle. Okay, sorry. Remember the lifestyle? Go ahead. So yes, before we get to lifestyle, remember, you can't make us do all the work. You have to do some work too. So you'll get a home exercise program for your hip. You know, so different things to strengthen your hip. Uh, and then the lifestyle. What do I mean by lifestyle? One, if you used to run mm-hmm. and jog, change it, you may change that to swimming and cycling. You know, no longer loading. Because, you know, when you're running and you're, you know, stomping, stomping, stomping that, stomping. right. So oh, decrease man, activity. Hey. For example, if you if you are in a job where you need a lot of stairs, you know, I'm not telling you to change your jobs, but plan your plan your day you go through the stairs once you don't go up and down up and down because climbing stairs are going to you know kind of aggravate and cause a lot of swelling and pain and that kind of for, stuff for just for the persons with hip arthritis right for hip arthritis in particular and that kind of work because that's joint conservation behavior okay it works for the shoulder what do i mean by that if you have shoulder arthritis or rotator cuff <laughs> joint conservation instead of reaching up mm-hmm. and to reaching, f- back a reaching forward, backward yeah. you get up and you turn, mm-hmm. or you get a tall person, if you have a tall person in your house, and ask them to get it, that's being smart. Or you get a safe stool or ladder mm-hmm. or chair, and you mm-hmm. climb up. Mm-hmm. So you're not putting your joints in extreme mm-hmm. positions. So that's called joint conservation, right? And so, and of course, weight loss. Weight loss is always important. So that's lifestyle. You know, your exercise and your weight loss and your home exercise program. Mm-hmm. Right? All right. Mm-hmm. You finished with the algorithm? I, was, I know you're not finished. The first with algorithm. part of the algorithm. Okay. We don't reach injection yet. Uh, Alright. Okay, go ahead. Continue. Oh. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So I mean, I know you said I know you spoke about the science and the symptoms. Mm-hmm. But how do you test for it? Like how do you know? You know why I love you so much because you're so such a great host. <laughs> Thank you. Cause that's a good question. Examination, first is the history. Mm -hmm. So most clinical diagnoses are made with one history where the patients tell you that's happening to them. Pain when the time cold, pain when I get up to work, Mm -hmm. when I wait bare. Mm -hmm. Two, decreased range of motion. On your examination, there are certain maneuvers. For example, hip arthritis, internal rotation. You know, like when you're sitting down and your knee's at 90 degree and you try to bring your ankle outwards to the side. That's called internal, you're internally rotating your hip. That is either decreased mm. or you get a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. So hip arthritis, I can almost sometimes I don't even need an X-ray, which we usually do to confirm. Okay. So it's an X-ray. Okay. You know, you don't need an MRI for hip arthritis unless you're suspecting something else. For example, like a tendon issue or a ligament issue or the cartilage itself around the hip is called like the labrum. You know, the labrum, which is like, you know, a chicken leg and you have that hey, big, hey, nice hey, white thing that some people can. like to eat. So that's kind of like I a know capsule. That one. I know that right. one. So, so, unless you're looking for some soft tissue, you don't do an MRI. And if you do, mm-hmm. you go to... Come on. <laughs> Winchester MRI. Winchester MRI. <laughs> Guys, we like Winchester because they're our partners, right? But x-ray is really what you need for hip arthritis. You don't need anything else. It's hip um, arthritis diagnosed with clinical... History, what the patient tells you. Two, what you find on examination, the signs. And three, if you need an x-ray. And then, you know, that's basically how you diagnose it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, great. So you can continue now with the rest of the algorithm. Ah, so rich injection, your favorite part. I just love it. You know? You know? So, you see, unlike the knee where you can inject someone in office, knee hip injection is usually done on the X-ray guidance because the hip is so deep. So I I use fluoroscopy, mm-hmm. f- which is X-ray guidance to go down to the hip. And sometimes I use cortical steroid. You know they use PRP, platelet rich plasma. You know some people may use um, hyaluronic acid, which is a type of lubricating fluid mm-hmm. that is used. We use that in the knee quite a bit. 
the hyaluronic acid or HA, if you can't say hyaluronic acid too fast, <laughs> right? And so, but X-ray guidance, if you're going to inject the hip, is what you need. And so, or some people use ultrasound guidance, but you need to know where you're going so you can confirm position. And thereafter, you may need a total hip replacement where the orthopedic surgeons are the ones who will give you a good reconstruction of your hip. Okay, so then take out my hip, the bone. Mm. Yes, so they take out the socket, the acetabulum, and give you a new socket, and they take off the hip. Oh, you know, I like that question. So they have two types of hip replacement. They have hip resurfacing, mm -hmm. where they just resurface the femoral head, or they actually take out the entire head and put in a new, it looks like, it literally looks like the, the head of the femur. And so interestingly, sometimes after a hip replacement, one leg may be, you may change height of that leg. Man, I just knew it. Because just remember, everybody's it. body is different. And if you have a femoral head, a particular shape and length, yeah. when you buy the hip prosthesis, <laughs> it's usually a few sizes. You know, mm. you may have a big person's yeah. prosthesis or a small yeah. person the implants, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you, can't, you don't necessarily have one custom made for yourself. So you may end up with a change in your limb length. Ooh, but the good thing is patients link. who do total hip arthroplasty, they need rehab as well. After you do a total hip replacement, you're going to need rehab after that. And I know patients who go back to playing doubles tennis, not necessarily singles tennis, doubles. So you don't have to run too far. Mm. Yep. That's not bad. Not bad at all. That's actually not bad at all. Ha, but, you know, I mean, that's just all we got the time for. I don't know, this program just went so fast. It's like, where's the, the time? time? Cool. I know. But thank you so much, listeners. Thank you to Power 106, our show producers. Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean is located at Suite 2A to see Ligon Post Mall. And thank you to the sponsors. The Rehabilitation Institute of the Caribbean, Winchester MRI, Immune Active Deck, and Almighty Studios. We'll see you all next week, same time, same place. Blessings. Bye. And remember also, if you have missed any of our episodes you can check them out on our youtube page as rehab caribbean, caribbean. bless you blessing Almighty studios your recording studio a place to praise to worship and to serve welcome to the new normal industry standard we are where you can come to worship and rehearse record mix or master your music we have all you need to create your best production including beat song podcast, commercial, and whatever you can ask, think, or imagine. Book your time today at Almighty Studios.